நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. This is astrologer Deepa and I'm presenting you the English version of the Tamil video. Today I'm going to explain the natal chart of a very very important person. You would have definitely seen the title and there is no suspense. The Tamil civilization is such an ancient civilization. The unfolding ecological and geological evidence is proving to be the historical validation that Tamil civilization is one of the most ancient civilization. Many researchers say that Tamil is origin of over 4500 languages spoken in the world. and we tamilians must be very proud that our mother tongue is tamil there is a prevalent idea across the world that the first and foremost civilization that sprung up in the world is tamil culture and recently we see a lot of archaeological evidence from kiradi which proves that tamil civilization is the first and foremost civilization of the world Many European researchers have done research about the lost continent Lemuria where the Tamilians lived across the continent and due to natural calamities the continent was lost. This also proves that the world's oldest civilization is the Tamil civilization. Every day people are witnessing archaeological evidence from Kiradi and around the world and across many parts of the world Tamil is an official language English is more prevalent in this world but we all know that English is not an ancient language rather it is predominantly used by modern people and Tamilians are the people who live widely across the world whether it is domain of research spiritualism science mathematics or valor sports or any field of expertise tamilians are still leading in the world there are great warriors great avatars who always still live there were great warriors great avatars who always still live in the hearts of the people and one such great man who's a tamilian who is known for his valor who lived in our period the leader of tamil nationalism mr prabhakaran i'm going to explain the natal chart of the leader of tamil nationalism mr prabhakaran i couldn't explain the natal chart of the leader of tamil nationalism mr prabhakaran so far because all the subscribers who follow me on youtube who very well know about me that i never explain the chart a natal chart whose date of birth is not valid or which is not even credible enough there are totally 11 charts of mr narendra modi available on the internet it is really challenging to find which one is true which one is the correct one even when i quoted once the natal chart of our prime minister mr narendra modi i added that i don't know how far to rely on it if only i know that a natal chart is credible by known resources then i discuss the chart with my subscribers this is the reason i have not explained the natal charts of many vips and the power of internet is enormous these days a very famous astrological site mentioned the date of birth of the leader of tamil nationalism mr prabhakaran as november 26 1955 they have casted a natal chart based on his date of birth and they have given a lot of explanations for his natal chart 
There are certain sites that say that he was born in the year of 1954 and certain sites say that year was 1955. And there was confusion in the birth timing as well. Some say that he was born in the evening 4 p.m. and some say he was born in the morning time 5 a.m. I don't believe anything hastily without any proof. Indeed, it should be the quality of an astrologer. Therefore, being an astrologer, I don't believe everything that comes on the internet. I have a very strict policy that I would like to explain to my followers the natal charts of the people which are very, very credible. Since the natal charts I came across about Mr. Prabhagaran were not credible, I hesitated all these days to explain his natal chart. One of my acquaintance has sent me a handwritten copy of the natal chart of the leader of Tamil nationalism, Mr. Prabhagaran. The most significant part of this handwritten copy of the natal chart is that it was drafted by his own father, Mr. Velu Pillai. One of my subscribers mentioned that this was handwritten by Mr. Velu Pillai, who was the father of leader of Tamil nationalism, Mr. Prabhagaran, on the day he was born. This was received by the people in my office and I also shared this news with everybody. When I made predictions based on the natal chart, I realized that this must be correct birth details of Mr. Prabhagaran. Based on birth details given by Mr. Velu Pillai, who was the father of Prabhakaran, the birth time was 7 hours, 18 minutes in the night. Based on the predictions I made with the given timing and other details, I found this natal chart to be correct. I am going to explain this natal chart now. Currently, you are seeing the natal chart of the leader of Tamil nationalism, Mr. Prabhagaran. He was born on 26-11-1954, that is 26th November 1954, night time at 7.18 pm in a place called Yarpanam. He is the native of Gemini Ascendant, Scorpio Rashi and Kete Nakshatra, that is Jeshta Nakshatra. He is the native of Gemini Ascendant and Ketu resides in Ascendant House. In the second house, Jupiter is exalted and in the fifth house, there are three planets, Venus, Mercury and Saturn. And all these three planets reside in the fifth house. In the sixth house, there are two planets, Sun and Moon. He was born on the day after Amavasya, that is he was born in Pratipath. Rahu resides in the seventh house, whose house lord, that is Dispositor Jupiter, is exalted in the ninth house. In the ninth house, Mars resides. This is the natal chart of Mr. Prabhagaran. Let me explain the Navamsha as well. In Navamsha, the ascendant is Scorpio, the moon resides in the third house in Capricorn, Ketu resides in fourth house which is Aquarius, Venus and Saturn reside in the sixth house in Aries, Mercury resides in seventh house in Taurus, Jupiter and Rahu reside in Leo which is the tenth house, Sun and Mars reside in Libra which is the twelfth house. This is the status of Navamsha. When he was born, a Mercury Dasha of 10 years, 2 months and 10 days were remaining. And at the age of 17 years, he started undergoing the Dasha of Venus. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, Venus is Raja Yogadipati and the major planetary period of Venus started at 17 years. At the age of 22 years, that is 1976, he started LTTE, Liberation Tigers of Tamil Iram. There were many great warriors who were born in this world. 
We still remember such a great warrior who was born thousand years ago, the great king Raja Raja Choran. Though we the Tamilians are divided by the countries such as Sri Lankan Tamils or the Indian Tamils, we are united by the language, our mother tongue, Tamil. And though people have different opinions, Mr. Prabhakaran is a significant figure in this world who will always be remembered by the Tamilians. Though he was not a king of a country, he was not an official president of a country, Though he was not recognized as a national leader of a country, Chantrika Kumarathunga, who was a Sri Lankan politician, who was the former president of Sri Lanka, made a remark that 2 by 3 of the oceanic area and 1 by 3 of the land area was under the control of Mr. Prabhagaran, who was the leader of LTTE. The president of Sri Lanka explicitly shared her opinion that 2 by 3 of the oceanic area of her country and 1 by 3 of the land area of her country was under the control of Mr. Prabhagaran. These words were uttered by the Sri Lankan president. From this, we know how Mr. Prabhagaran ruled that country. He was such a great and valorous person. There can be a huge difference of opinion regarding his acts among us within the Tamil community. However, the fact is he is a significant person in the history of Tamil race. Let us see what is the planetary position that made him car a significant position in the history of Tamilians. He is always remembered as a remarkable and significant person in the history of Tamilians. Let us see how his natal chart helped him to become famous, to lead a group of activists and have long-lasting fame in the history of Tamil race. Let us see what made him to be remembered by the people even after his death. Let us discuss the reasons for this. I am going to explain all these to you in this video and you all know my concepts of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength. I always explain these concepts to my followers. I am going to explain the natal chart of the leader of Tamil nationalism Mr. Prabhagaran with my concepts of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength. You can very well see the natal chart of Mr. Prabhagaran. You can see in the second house, Jupiter, which is in Cancer, it is exalted. I always insist on a point which makes a person very significant. And that particular feature is present in this natal chart. The friendly planets are in quadrant to each other. And the enemy planets are in quadrant to each other in this natal chart. This is one of the most significant features in the natal chart. In this natal chart of Mr. Prabhagaran, leader of Tamil nationalism, who was born as a native of Gemini ascendant, the friendly planets to the ascendant lord, Venus and Saturn are in conjunction with ascendant lord Mercury in Libra. The functional benefits of the native of Mercury ascendant, which are Venus and Saturn, are in quadrant to each other, that is, here in this chart, they both are in conjunction with Mercury in the fifth house, which is Libra. Venus is in its own house in Libra. Venus and Saturn are close to each other. In the very similar fashion, the enemies to the ascendant, Sun, Moon, Mars and Jupiter are in quadrant and trying to each other in this natal chart. Well, the sun and moon are in quadrant to each other in Scorpio and in the fourth house, that is in the quadrant house to Scorpio, Mars resides in Aquarius. And in the trine house to sun and moon, Jupiter resides in Cancer. 
based on my concept that when friendly planets are in quadrant to each other and enemy planets are in quadrant or in trine house to each other it is considered to be very significant this is the highlight of this natal chart though mars and jupiter are in 68 axis mars is just 1 degree in aquarius i always insist one more concept when all the planets are subhatva in the natal chart it is highly significant in this natal chart jupiter is exalted and there is no affliction of jupiter in this natal chart indeed saturn aspects jupiter by its 10th aspect from libra however saturn has subhatva by the conjunction of venus when saturn has got subhatva its aspect will not affect other graha and it will not cause worse effects in case of saturn is exalted in libra without the connection of a benefic and when it aspects jupiter definitely jupiter will be affected but here saturn resides in libra with two great benefics venus and mercury which are its friends as well so based on the concept of subhatva pabhatva and sukshma strength saturn will not affect the graha by its aspect because it is in conjunction with its friendly planets natural benefics venus and mercury so saturn has got subhatva having said all these there are three factors that determine or help a person to become a leader leo scorpio and aries deliver the authoritative position or the leading position houses such as leo scorpio and aries signify the authoritative position leading position fighting spirit uncontrollable nature and leadership quality in this natal chart jupiter which gets exalted once in 12 years aspects by its fifth aspect the lord of leo house sun by 5 degrees because jupiter is in 6 degrees in cancer and sun is in 10 degrees in scorpio sun which is the house lord of leo gets aspected by the exalted jupiter just by the difference of 5 degrees this is the reason why he was able to lead his army if leo is also subhatva in the natal chart he will be a leader who was officially accepted as a leader of a nation by the whole world however the president of sri lanka accepted that 2 by 3 of the oceanic area and 1 by 3 of the land area was under the control of mr prabhagaran the leader of tamil nationalism the unofficial declaration of the ex president was because of the aspect of jupiter on the luminous planets sun and moon which are responsible for the leadership qualities this is one of the significant features in this natal chart The antidote of Amavasya here is the aspect of Jupiter which is exalted and Saturn was made subhatva by Venus and Mercury. And Mars is just at 1 degree in Aquarius and the Capricorn has the aspect of exalted Jupiter. Since the exalted Jupiter is aspecting a house its light will tend to spread to the neighboring houses as well so in his natal chart there will be some light spread on the aquarius beginning cusp part as well so mars has got very very little subhatva by the aspect of jupiter based on subhatva of the bhava if on the aries and scorpio or subhatva one can get into uniformed services such as army building strategies of war implementing methods of war if only these two bhavas aries and scorpio or subhatva then one can excel in the fields that i listed now 
Having said this, Rashi of Mr. Prabhagaran is Scorpio Rashi. And Scorpio is aspected by exalted Jupiter, which has enormous light energy. His natal chart shows that the leader of Tamil nationalism, Mr. Prabhagaran, was under a war atmosphere at a very younger age. The second point is that he went through the major planetary period of Venus until 37 years of age. Until 37 years of age, he faced a lot of struggles in his life. What is the reason? Because Venus is in conjunction with Saturn and Mercury. Though Venus has made the Saturn Subhatva, Venus was spoiled by conjunction of Saturn and Venus has not got any connection of benefit to make it Subhatva. This is the reason until 37 years of age, that is approximately until 1983 or 1984, his life was filled with lot of struggles. Once the major planetary period of the sun started, his leadership qualities came into light. The major planetary period of the sun started in 1992. It is because of a great mishap that happened in 1991, the bomb blast, where we lost our ex-Prime Minister of India, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. It was at that moment the leader of Tamil nationalism, Mr. Prabhagaran, became prominent. When there was a probe against this case to find the hands involved in this bomb blast, Mr. Prabhagaran's name started to be known to everybody. The Lord of the Third House is in the Sixth House by the aspect of Jupiter and it is in 1991 that Mr. Prabhagaran became very famous. Since both Sun and Moon are under the aspect of exalted Jupiter, the major planetary period of Sun and Moon helped him a lot. This is the reason in 1991 he was able to become the leader of Tamil Eram activist group and he was the head of this group for almost 16 years. In whosoever natal chart, when 6th house is very strong, the person will always be competitive and the person will be on the war front. As per Bhava Lordship, you have to predict this. In this natal chart, he is the native of Gemini Ascendant and 6th house is the house of Mars. This is the reason why Mr. Prabhagaran stayed on the war front throughout his life and he also died on the war field. The sun and moon both reside in 6th house which is the house of Mars and the house lord that is dispositor Mars resides in the quadrant house to sun and moon and since Jupiter aspects Mars a little, Mr. Prabhagaran worked and spent almost 16 years after 1991 in the war field. Once the major planetary period of moon got over, the major planetary period of Mars started, which was really, really unfortunate for the leader of Tamil nationalism, Mr. Prabhagaran. I always say that the native of Gemini ascendant should never undergo Dasha of Mars. It is only the major planetary period of Mars that marked the end of his life. We will discuss this later. In his birth chart, both 6th house and 10th house are highly Subhatva. The 6th house, which is the house of Mars here, represents the war front. And the Subhatva of the 6th house helped him to become the leader of a big army of activists. He was the leader of an army who had the power to even threaten a country. Though the war he led was against the government, it was perceived as a freedom war by many of the countries. The reason is both 6th house and 10th house are highly Subhatva, by the aspect of exalted Jupiter in the second house in the natal chart of Mr. Prabhagaran. 
and uh, let us check based on rashi based on rashi that is scorpio rashi leo is the 10th house though leo house is not subhatva directly the house lord of leo which is sun was aspected by exalted jupiter and thus it became very very strong this is the reason he got indirect authority though not officially authoritative in a country i say this point because the countries across the world did not accept him as the head of the president of sri lanka however mr prabhagaran had control or he possessed a great army that could even challenge the president of sri lanka none of the countries around the world officially recognized the tamil elam as a legal army however mr prabhagaran was the president of tamil elam who created his own laws he received taxes and above all he was accepted as a leader by the people Though there were differences in opinion among the people the majority of the people accepted him as their leader since the 6th and 10th houses or subhatva in his natal chart he was accepted as the leader by majority of the people around him what is the reason for his fame that is long lasting until now even after his death i will definitely say that the third house is the reason for his long lasting fame that he gained even after his demise the third house to the moon was aspected by exalted jupiter and in addition to this the third house to the ascendant whose lord sun was aspected by exalted jupiter the houses that are aspected by jupiter becomes very strong based on this concept if one has to get long lasting fame even after death then the third house of the rashi and ascendant has to be subhatva in this natal chart the third house lord is under the aspect of exalted jupiter in addition to this if the third house to the ascendant was also subhatva then he would have gained fame in such a way that it is really without any taint his fame was little tainted that nobody can deny because of his acts there was a doubt about him being involved in the assassination of the ex indian prime minister mr rajiv gandhi and thus his fame was little tainted the reason for this taint is because the third house is not directly subhatva there are two factors that define the long lasting fame of the leader of tamil nationalism mr prabhagaran the first one is third house to the rashi which was aspected by exalted jupiter and the third house lord to the ascendant sun was also aspected by jupiter this is the reason he gained fame and it will last as long as this tamil race exists though he was criticized by many people in many countries he was at the top of fame during the major planetary period of sun and moon the luminous planets that are responsible for giving authoritative power such as sun and moon or aspected by exalted jupiter and these luminous planets also reside in the 6th house this is a reason why he got such long lasting fame and authority since these luminous planets are in the 6th house he was not directly recognized by the countries in the world however he was in the position as the head of ltte for so many years the dasha of sun and moon which was under the aspect of exalted jupiter made him to lead his group now let us come to the next point 
I always insist that the native of Gemini ascendant should never undergo the major planetary period of Mars. I often reiterate a point that the native of Gemini ascendant should never undergo the major planetary period of the Mars and if they do so, the life will be definitely miserable. Mr. Prabhagaran faced a lot of challenges as soon as the major planetary period of Mars started. The major planetary period of Mars started on 6th February 2008. The year when the major planetary period of Mars started, which is the Lord of the Sixth House, his enemies gained more strength than Mr. Prabhagaran, that is one and a half years before his death. He has faced a lot of setbacks since 2008. Mars is in the ninth house and Mars has not got much Subhatwa. Mars does not have the direct aspect of Jupiter and Mars resides in the house of luck. As per Bhavat Bhavam, Mars resides in the eighth house to the second house where Jupiter resides. During major planetary period of Mars and minor planetary period of Rahu, it could be May 18th or May 19th or May 20th, 2009, he might have expired. The date is not exactly known. It can be May 18th or May 19th or May 20th, 2009. He should have expired on any one of these days. During his time of death, he was undergoing major planetary period of Mars and minor planetary period of Rahu. Rahu resides in Maraka Bhatakasthana in the 7th house for the Gemini Ascendant. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, the house which is responsible for giving death, the 7th house is where Rahu resides. The seventh house to the native of Gemini ascendant is Sagittarius, which is the house of Jupiter and is responsible as Marakasthana, Pathakasthana, and it is also a quadrant house. He expired during the major planetary period of Mars and minor planetary period of Rahu on any one of these dates, May 18th or May 19th or May 20th, 2009. You know very well that Rahu will act and deliver its effects just as the house lord. I have mentioned this in the Sukshma state of Chaya Graha. Wherever Rahu reside, it will deliver the house effects as the house lord and it will act like the house lord. It can even invoke Karaho Bhavanasti or whatever the role of the house where it resides. It will deliver the effects of the house just as the house lord. His death occurred during major planetary period of Mars, which is the lord of the sixth house, and during minor planetary period of Rahu, which acts just like the exalted Jupiter, which is Marakadipati, Padakadipati, and Kendradipati as well. Here, prediction is. Rahu does not act as Padagadipadi but as Marakadipadi because I often reiterate a point that a Padagadipadi will deliver Padaka if only it resides in the Padaka house. This is a rule which applies 100% correctly. Even if it is in good strength, whether it is exalted or whatever, Padagadipadi should reside in the Padaka house in order to deliver Padaka. If Padakadipati has to deliver Padaka, it should reside in the Padaka house. On contrary, Marakadipati can deliver Maraka no matter in whichever house it resides. There is no rule at all that a planet will deliver Padaka when it resides in Padakasthana, which is not its own house. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, 2nd and 7th houses are Marakasthanas. For the native of Gemini Ascendant, Moon, 
becomes a lord of the second house moon treats mercury as its own child so a mother will not kill her child and the moon will not kill the native of gemini ascendant then left is the seventh house which can kill the native of gemini ascendant since rahu will just act like its house lord where it resides rahu here delivers maraka to the native of gemini ascendant consequently during major planetary period of mars and minor planetary period of rahu in 2009 in the month of may among the three dates 18th or 19th or 20th mr prabhagaran the leader of tamil nationalism expired the natal chart of mr prabhagaran is a perfect example for the concept of subhatva in case if mars was under the aspect of jupiter directly then he would have been recognized as a president of a country legally if mars has got direct subhatva and the house of leo has got direct subhatva definitely he would have become a president of a country or he would have become the head of an army which was legally recognized or approved by all the countries around the world there is no such setting in this natal chart and moreover he was not born as a native of such an ascendant naturally he was a very very intelligent person and he was a native of gemini ascendant who was excellent in developing war strategies utilizing resources and the implementation of concepts created and managing the people of the army etc he never expressed himself as a soldier rather he was prominently seen as an intelligent guy who could make clear war strategies to save the people you could have observed this from many of his interviews and even from his acts even in many interviews where he appeared he did not appear on the screen with a uniform rather he appeared in casuals he never created image as a soldier as a uniformed serviceman in photographs you would have seen him in uniform but in interviews he expressed himself as a man who can talk diplomatically very patient he reflected all the qualities of a gemini ascendant who measured while talking and he took great care not to hurt the sentiments of others he was very very thoughtful intelligent and he took a lot of care while talking there was a live interview by some international press people regarding the assassination of ex prime minister of india mr rajiv gandhi and when a question was asked about whether he had involvement in the assassination of mr rajiv gandhi mr prabhakaran expressed that he perceives that incident as a very unpleasant one and he did not express himself as an activist rather when mars is highly strong in one's natal chart the native will become a soldier these native will be very angry type because anger is the one that leads an army that invokes a person to fight against enemies anger leads a person to go further and further in the war field where it is filled with blood where many lives were lost and eventually victory was grabbed in case mr prabhagaran was born as a native of aries ascendant or scorpio ascendant he would have been a full time soldier on contrary mr prabhagaran was never a full time soldier in his life he was like a commander who devised great war strategies and the methods to be followed in the war who worked in the back end and who never worked on the war front the reason why he never stood on the war front rather he worked in the back end is that is neither native of aries ascendant nor a native of scorpio ascendant and since scorpio is highly subhatva he can plan the war strategies 
since he is native of gemini ascendant he became such a capable person who became a nightmare for a small country and he was able to challenge a big country as well you can very well see that this natal chart is a perfect example to explain my concepts of subhatva pabhatva and sukshma strength i was not ready to explain the natal chart of mr prabhagaran these days as i couldn't make sure whether his birth timing was correct or not why he got such a fame around the world it is nothing but based on the following points the subhatva of the bhava the friendly planets are in quadrant to each other and the enemy planets are in quadrant or trying to each other the ascendant lord mercury itself is in conjunction with fifth house lord and ninth house lord and moreover the ascendant lord is in the house of a benefic the fifth house lord is in its own house status the ninth house lord is exalted and the ascendant lord is in the house of a benefic these are the reasons why he got such fame around the world the 6th and 10th houses are subhatva what does the 6th house signify the 6th house signifies the war strategies authoritative nature the 10th house of course it is the house that says about the authority and sun signifies the authority mr prabhagaran started ltte at 22 years of age and he continued to be the head of ltte until his death from 22 years of age and until his death he led ltte and he was accepted by his activist army as the head though there were some setbacks the majority of his army people accepted him as the leader no leader in this world is accepted 100% by the people we call a person as a leader when the majority of the people like and it doesn't mean that 100% of the people or the citizens or a group should accept him should like him should accept him as a leader there were many situations where 70% or 80% of the people have accepted a person as a leader and the remaining people would even have hatred or even the remaining percentage of people would have criticized the leader very badly mr prabhagaran is also not an exception to this case if everybody accepts a person as a leader it is signified by 6th house and 10th house since in the natal chart of mr prabhagaran the 6th and 10th houses are highly subhatva he was accepted as leader by his people until his death the ltte which was started at 22 years of age of mr prabhagaran accepted and followed mr prabhagaran as their leader until his death from 1992 to 2008 for almost 16 or 17 years mr prabhagaran was on the top of fame and the luminous planets sun and moon which were under the aspect of exalted jupiter is one of the reasons he was also criticized by a group of people indeed because of the sixth house planetary position as i already explained at the beginning of the video the friendly planets are in quadrant to each other and more importantly rahu and ketu did not affect any other planet all the planets in the natal chart have good light energy and subhatva these are the reasons why mr prabhagaran lived as a great leader and led his army as a head for many years and coming to the point of fame i already said until the last man of the tamil race lives the fame of prabhagaran will be definitely talked about it will stand long until the last man of the tamil culture lives there will be definitely some people who sing the glory of mr prabhagaran and there will be certain people who also criticize mr prabhagaran however his name will be in the history 
whether he is perceived as good or bad his name will be etched in the history of tamilian race mr prabhagaran will be definitely identified as a person for his courage or a person who fought for his community the tamil community will be definitely talking about his intelligence his strategies in the future and he will be always remembered by all the tamilians in the description box we have added the playlist link of all the english videos so far published please write your feedback to astro.writeus@gmail.com thank you